What's up guys, Derek here from DaysDesigns.com back with a tutorial in part two of our jersey design tutorial. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create a template, and this is a vector template. I'm gonna be using Adobe Illustrator. If you don't have it, you should try to get it because it's super important. So yeah, anyways, um, so I guess you could say for starters, we're going to start uh, with a new file in Adobe Illustrator. So, you know, you just go up to file, new, or just go to new. Uh, it's gonna show you a different screen. And then we're gonna make our artboard to 41.67 inches right here on the width and then 56.09 inches. These aren't any specific dimensions, but I did find them online. So I've been using these and they've been working out well for me. So um, I have like three layers. Our first layer is gonna be our overlay layers where we're gonna put our jersey designs on top of. Then we're gonna have our assets layer. This is where the vectors are actually gonna be. That's where we're gonna create our vectors. We're basically gonna trace our mock-up images. And then we have a, another layer behind that for backgrounds. You don't have to use it, but I always put one just to separate things. So uh, yeah, so that's our basic um, Adobe Illustrator file. And then, um, you know, we have our Photoshop jersey mock-ups that we created before, not the mock-up itself, but just the design. Again, I did not create this template. If you would like to purchase this template, you can go to my description. There are links there for uh, the Yellow Images website. So now that we have these made and we have our Adobe Illustrator file, we're going to save these as PNG images. So before you do that, you want to make sure that your backgrounds, so this blank image is hidden. The uh, If you have another image for the background color is hidden as well. And then the background color is just hidden. So you see these squares. We're gonna go to file, save, or you could go to export. I just go to save as a little bit quicker. So save as, and then we're gonna go to click PNG, and then we're gonna click save. So yeah, now we're going to go to our Adobe Illustrator file, and we're gonna drag those guys in there. All right, so I have my front right here. So click and drag this guy. And again, I'm gonna put that on my uh, top layer. So, you can say I'm going to be putting both of these on the same uh, template. So they're both going to be in the same template and I'm going to put them uh, a little bit smaller than half size. So and I'm going to put one on the top and then one on the bottom and they should both fit. So about this size is really good actually. So um, yeah, it's not any specific size. You can really just judge it by, uh, I guess your intuition or your gut or whatever you want to say. And right now I'm going to make sure that it's aligned in the center, which it was actually better before. So. Um, so yeah, I already have I already have my uh, my rulers. So to get your rulers, push Control R. That's how you get your ruler bar, and then you click and drag on the bar to get your rulers out. Uh, Control or Command Alt, and then the uh, semicolon key. That's how you release them, and then do the same thing again. That's also how you lock them. So just so you guys can move them around. I already have mine set up in the middle. I'm going to try to get this as close to the center as I can. So if I was to highlight my files right here, well actually. All right, so it lines up with uh, this D right here on my logo. So um, just using that for reference, whoops. So it's about on the line, the vertical line. So, so if I was to move this guy over, it'd be about there. That's probably, that's probably the best part. All right, so I'm just going to leave it there for now. Then I'm going to get my second one in the backside uh, of this jersey. Then I'm going to try to make it the exact same size. Um, technically you don't have to, I'm just going to be copying and pasting the front to the back, but if your jersey design, the front is different from the back, then obviously you're going to have to, um, you know, recreate the whole, uh, design. Like if there's any differences, any nuances, <laughs> whatever you want to say. So I'm just going to put, uh, the back, you know, about the same size. All right. So I'm going to try to line up the designs rather because they're different on this template, right? I thought so. All right, so you can always go to transparency, lower this, and then switch it over. Just trying to line it up, make it a little bit smaller, and that's probably good enough. All right, so put our transparency back up, and then I'm just going to put it right there. So that's good for now. I'm going to lock both of these guys. I'm actually going to lower the opacity on them to about 25 or something. It doesn't really matter, whatever you guys want to use. So now that we have those in place, our background, we're actually going to create the uh, our base plate for our template, something that you guys can use for future reference and things like that. So uh, I'm really just going to follow our template. 
So if you're using a different mock-up, it may be different for you, um, but it'll be fine either way. So I'm just gonna put uh, very straight lines, just generalized lines right here. And then our, uh, I guess you could say our opening right here probably ends there. So I'm gonna put it out here and I'm gonna go straight down. I created these rulers. So yeah, one thing to keep in mind is just try to keep it as close to your template as possible, or sorry, as to your mock-up as possible. Um, so yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. And our jersey is white, so I'm gonna give this a white fill. <clears throat> and yeah, so I'm just gonna push O on my keyboard, the letter O, then push Alt and click. So again, so I highlight whatever I wanna flip, and then I push O on my keyboard, hold Alt, and then click with the uh, the left mouse key or whatever. And then I'm gonna keep it on vertical and then copy. And then it's gonna duplicate it to the other side and it's gonna rotate it perfectly. So now we have that. All right, so now the fun part is uh, I'm gonna do something similar for the arms, but not exactly. So I'm gonna start where I just ended the base plate of our shirt. Then I'm gonna put it to the edge of the sleeve. I'm also gonna give this a stroke. So go to my stroke panel. Uh, put it on like five or something doesn't really matter and then I'm actually going to rotate or <laughs> rotate this so it's the, the same angle as our base plate the shoulder part so I'm gonna click right there so I push R on my keyboard do that again so I highlight what I want to rotate push R on my keyboard and push it right there right where I want the uh, where the center to be and then I click and drag it and then that's how we rotate. So now we have kind of like a perfect line. So that's where it would extend out to. And then I would just put like a, a simple angle on this um, to make this like a 90 degree angle, like from here to here. So, so yeah, now we're just, uh, I'm just gonna highlight that control two. That's how you, uh, that's how you lock objects. So now I'm just gonna, again, start from the top part of my shoulder, go to the edge of this, and then I'm just gonna create an angle. All right, so again, I'm just gonna extend it out to about here, and then I'm gonna go right about to our, where our corner is where we created on this thing and it's not necessarily anything specific this is just a general template um you know every company has their own dimensions and stuff uh you know it has to do with sizing you know the actual shape of their clothing and stuff like that so it's just a general base template so that whoever is actually going to be doing the print production has something to use to reference that's a vector that can be scaled all right now that we have that size that side created now you can see this is the full uh you know like the full left side right here so again i'm going to click on that object go back to our middle i'm going to push o on my keyboard alt left click vertical copy bam now it's on the right side Again, I'm just gonna continue to follow this layout and create the collar right here. So I'm just literally just gonna retrace everything that I see. And again, this is just to act as a base. No way it's gonna be perfect, but this will do. So, so yeah, that'll work for now. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the back. Um, really just gonna follow this and follow our seam, ideally. These should both be the same size. So click there and there. So I'm gonna highlight this one, click on that one, go to a line and then push this one. So now they are in a straight line. So if I was to go get a ruler, they'd be lined up. So just lining these up in the center, that's one thing to make sure that everything is lined up. If you have a ruler, sometimes it can be off. Uh, in Adobe Illustrator, I found that to be extremely annoying. So <laughs> that's one thing you wanna keep in mind. So I'm just going to highlight both of these collars right here. Oh, on my keyboard, Alt, click, uh, and then bam. So now we have it. I'm going to unite these two, the bottom collar, and then the one that's on the back side. Bring the one on the front forward. And then I'm just going to click both of these, Control G or Command G, and group them. So yeah, and we have our first uh, side. So I'm going to do the exact same thing for the back. So I'm basically just going to uh, highlight those, Alt, click, and drag, or sorry, click, alt and drag it's not the exact same for the back but um for my scenario i'm just going to line it up with the seams the collar seams are so you can see those right here the stitching so i'm just going to line it up with that redo the collar keep it straight across straight across and yeah so if you have like crazy designs on your collars you're really going to want to pay a lot of attention to um, I guess the quality and stuff like that. So yeah, now I'm just gonna control, uh, 
okay the okay on your keyboard alt click and bam and then it's both on the it's on the right side as well so now we have that collar now i'm gonna go get my colors so when we have our uh, our mock-up image right here you'll notice that there's highlights and shadows and everything to make it look uber realistic right so you can simply go to the t-shirt part the panel and then just hide both of these and these will give you your actual colors so now to get these in adobe illustrator you can just print screen or you know do a quick screen, uh, screenshot however you do that on windows i believe it's just the prt scr or uh, yeah scr key on your keyboard so i click that and that gave me a screenshot control v and then bam i have those so now i just click i on my keyboard that gives and i click the color that i want it gives me gray and then here's a pink as well that I want so these are the two main colors that I used and I believe there is actually some fading in here but it's the same colors as my logo so I just wanted to make sure I got the base colors right and we're good to go so also you're gonna need your logo files your asset files so I have my logo right here this actually has all the actual colors in it so I go to that file control C to copy then go back to our, our uh, template file control V to paste that guy in here and again, now I have, uh, you know, both of my my actual colors. So now again, we're just going to continue with our logo design and line that guy up just to follow along with our jersey design, our mock-up. Try to get as close as you can. Again, it may not be perfect. Awesome. So yeah, that's pretty much good enough. All right. So now that we have those down and good to go, we're going to start with our actual design. So... One thing I could do is start on the back side because this gives like a full visual of what that actually looks like, but I'm just gonna go on the fly and hope for the best. All right, so I'm just gonna start right here. And then I'm gonna say the middle is about here of this circle. So whenever you're creating circle shapes, you can think of a clock. So all your anchor points would be at nine, six, 12, three. And yeah, I think that's it. All right, so now we basically have a perfect circle. And I'm just going to find, try to find a middle ground for this guy. I'll click and drag that guy up. And then I'm just gonna bring it all the way out and just try to make it resemble our mock-up as much as I can. So yeah, I'm just gonna pretty much do this for the rest of the video. I'm gonna speed through this. I'll probably talk over this, give a, a quick talk through commentary, just to give you guys a heads up on what's uh, you know, what I'm doing, things like that. All right, guys, so now we are back with the arms. So we're going to do the actual arms now. Here's where it can get a little bit tricky. As you can see, if we followed along with our mock-up, it would just continue to go straight down. But usually on templates, the arms just completely extend out. So our arm, uh, <laughs> so if I was to hide this gray part and um, you know put like a stroke on our base plate right here. So put a black stroke on that guy. Don't have a stroke, we're just putting a stroke on it. And then we bring this all the way to the back. So now, now you get to see Kind of like here's where uh i guess you could say the indent is right here and then here's where our actual arm starts so i'm basically basically just going to recreate what i think the uh the mock-up image would look like if the arm was extended perfectly straight out so in my opinion it would just follow along just kind of like a straight line right here so i'm just going to do that so this one's really simple and really easy so that's a good part of this design uh, whenever i add in my add in any sponsors or stuff like that um, you know, I'm just going to shrink them to the size, tilt them to the side, and place them where I, you know, think they should be placed considering our mock-up image. All right, guys, so I just finished up the front di uh, front design. It's pretty much complete. So yeah, I also grouped these uh, these pieces on the, on the arms. It's really great to group things, just so there's spacing that needs to stay the exact same. You can just group them. Um, anybody with Adobe Illustrator, especially if they're doing print production, I would imagine knows how to use Adobe Illustrator fairly well. So that's just something to keep in mind. 
All right, so now we're literally just gonna highlight all of our main pieces and we're just gonna click, uh, click, highlight them all, hold alt, click and drag, and we're just gonna bring them all the way down. So and we're just gonna line them up with this template, this base plate right here. It was, the <clears throat> it was the same as our front, so everything should align perfectly. All right, so now that we have our back finished, uh, the design is all good and set to go. So now I'm just gonna add in everything else you know, the logos, the other sponsors, um, you know, the name, um, you know, so everything like that. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Usually when I'm finished, I'll wind up deleting these, uh, these right here, these files, it's because they are no longer needed and they take up a ridiculous amount of space in this file. I think each one is like 20 megabits or megabytes. <clears throat> so yeah, make sure to get rid of those. And then yeah, um, you know, you can group anything, like if spacing is you know perfect, you don't want to change any of that. You know, you can just group it. So if they scale it, everything scales at the same time. Um, you know, there's other things you can do, like you could, you know, create your own, um, uh, I guess you could say a bigger version of the actual collar and then you know put your design on it that would be something smart you could do if like you have a specific design and then you can also do the same thing for the sleeves themselves so you could create you know like another sleeve like right here like a bigger version of the sleeve and then do the same thing right here that's one thing to do obviously this will be the right side view and then this could be the left side view so if you're looking at it strictly from the left side and then strictly from the right side you know, and just create a bigger version of your design, you know, click and drag, edit, change things around however you see fit. All right, guys, so once you are finished recreating your jersey designs in this vector file, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to file, save as, or just save. And then we're just going to save it as whatever we want it to be saved as. Then we're going to click, uh, make sure it's on Adobe Illustrator. We're going to click save. I'm going to be replacing it in this case. Then we're going to click and go all the way down to Illustrator CS2. This is something we got to do a lot of the times. Not everyone has Adobe CC. Maybe you don't even have it. And then alternatively, you can also do the same thing again. But this time we're going to save it as an EPS file. So an Illustrator EPS file. So whether you have Adobe Illustrator or not, we just save it as this right here. And then go to CS2 again. So again, if they have a vector program, they can also open this up. An EPS file is basically a universal uh, vector file. So yeah, that's something you can also do. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, this is an RGB. So the next thing you can do would be to, you know, change the document uh, color mode to CMYK, and then it'll automatically change the colors. And then, you know, you file, save it as, and then just type CMYK at the end. Hopefully you guys enjoy this tutorial, creating this Jersey template. I'll be sure to include a link for this template, not the designs, but the template that I did just make, um, you know, the base and everything like that. So just in case you guys don't want to make it, save you guys some time. I'll be sure to put a link where you guys can download that in the description. So yeah, guys, again, it is Derek from DaysDesigns.com. If you guys would like to purchase this actual jersey design, this logo, um, you know, be sure to reach out via email. If you have a problem with this video, considering I don't have, or considering I have like corporate logo designs in here, if you are one of those corporate companies, you got a problem, send me an email. It's linked in the description. I would love to talk to you guys. So yeah, anyways, guys, again, Derek from daysdesigns.com. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, the tutorial, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.